foam out, foam out, foam out. And then after they, you know, done all the foaming out, they become so ashamed. They don't know what they are going to do again. We're coming to number, number two here. Number two is renewing the consecration of tested, trusted believers. We we'll come back to the Lord and we we'll renew our consecration completely unto the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 7. In Philippians chapter 3, looking at verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. The, the kind of things a believer has that in the unbelieving days I can talk myself into taking anything, getting anything from anybody. Those things that were gained to me, I count them now lost. A man that can, you know, no matter the woman, her beauty, her position, her status, I have this knack, I have this gift. I can talk her to anything, to my gain. The things that were gained to me, I count them now as loss. The woman that would say, it's only if I don't want him. If I want him, I can get him. I just have that natural talent and no matter how reserved they are how guarded they are if i want to get him that's that's me that's my gain when you become a believer the consecration we have and that's why we don't fall into temptations we now regard them as dung and trust it says the things what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ. The one that will say, if I want to get money from anybody, anybody, I have that ability to talk them into it. And the way I position myself and tell them the lies I want to tell them, they cannot shake it up. It will be too good for them to miss. That's the gain you had in the world. Now you come to Christ. The consecration we have now is that deliberately we give up all those things. What things were gained to me? Those I counted laws for Christ. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, ye doubtless, and I count all things but laws. Why? For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Look at the next verse there, verse 9. It says, and be found in him not having my own righteousness, not having my own a kind of degraded gift I've been using. And it says, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And in verse 10, that I may know him saved. I know him. I want to know him more. Sanctification. That I may know him. I know him as the sanctifier. I want to know him more. I want to know him as the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. I know him and baptize. I want to know him as the giver of the gifts of the Spirit. I know him. I want to know him more as the power of God in man. I know him. I want to know him as my giver, as my supplier, as the one that makes me steadfast even in the most dangerous situation that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings 
being made conformable unto his death. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We're renewing a consecration every time. We're reversing the cravings of the flesh and we're concentrated on him. Number three, number three, we're looking at receiving the crown of tried triumphant bride. Receiving the crown. You receive a crown. You will wear the crown. All that happens today in temptation and trial, you will overcome. And then on that day, look at the glory, look at the splendor, and look at the greatness of where the Lord will bring you to when you stand within among the angels and sanctified souls, saints in heaven. You'll be wonderful. You'll be a star shining forever and ever in Jesus' name. But you know, at this time now, we need to endure temptation. At this time now, we want to get engaged in the work of the Lord so that when He comes, yours, mine, will be the reward in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, But watch thou in all things. Watch thou in all things. Pete falls there. Watch thou in all things. And Pete holds there. Watch thou in all things. A ditch over there. Watch thou in all things. A tempter. A temptress over there. Watch thou in all things. And difficulties and trials and things that could easily trip anyone there. Watch thou in all things. Watch over your life. Watch over your language. Watch over your tongue. Watch over your situations. Watch over every circumstance, every situation you find yourself. Watch over all those challenges and watch over whatever crisis. When a crisis comes up, watch. Don't just talk. Don't just act. Look before you leave. Watch thou in all things and deal afflictions are there afflictions for the evangelist uh-huh yes and dear are there afflictions for the believer and dear are there afflictions for the soul winner and dear are there afflictions for the christian worker for the christian man for the christian woman watch and endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist do the work of a soul winner do the work of an harvester make full proof of thy ministry verse 6 in verse 6 for i am now ready i pray when your time comes you'll be ready uh, how can we get ready when our time comes be ready every day be ready every night be ready every time what if he comes tonight? Are there things I should make right that I have not made right? What if he comes tonight? Are there attitudes I bear, attitudes I wear that I need to turn around, make it bright, make it positive, make it practical? Are there things in your life? Are there things in my life that we need to say? Christ should not meet me in this condition when he comes. And he can come anytime. Because of that, be ready. He says, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at 
hand. He is living, this is a man living in the light. And because he was living in the light, there was no shady thing, there was no secret thing, there was no dark spot. He lived in the light of Christ every time. And because of that, he said, the light would have shown me if there was anything to be taken care of. But now, I am ready. I've been walking in the light and talking in the light and living in the light and behaving in the light and producing in the light because I walk in the light of a sunshine. He says, I'm now ready. And the time of my departure is at hand. He said in verse 7, in verse 7, I have fought a good fight, not a bad fight. Fighting against Satan, that's not a bad fight. Fighting to earnestly contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints, not a bad fight. Fighting the beast at Ephesus, that's not a bad fight. Fighting all the corruption of the flesh so that you live righteously godly in this present world that's not a bad fight fighting the flesh and fighting whatever will pull you down again that's not a bad fight i fought a good fight i have i have finished my course i have kept the faith look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. When you, when you come to the end of the journey, the end of the race, and you look back and you say, by the grace of God, you received the faith, you kept for the faith, you contended for the faith, you defended the faith, you lay by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you, and you were abiding consistently constantly in that faith you didn't sleep away into unbelief now you say there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them unto all them they them are they there tonight I said, are we there tonight? And to all them that love is appearing. A crown of righteousness, a crown of life, the price and the reward of constant, consistent commitment to the Lord is waiting for every one of us. Waiting for you. Waiting for the overcomers. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord himself will help you. In all the circumstances and situations, you might find yourself that the Lord will help you. You have to be sure of your salvation. Be born again. Repentance. You've left the path of sin. You've left the way of sin. You've left the practice of sin. You've left all those pollutions, all those pleasures of the flesh. You have confessed, you have repented, and you have said, Lord, I need forgiveness, I need salvation. Make sure that salvation is still intact. Talk to the Lord. Do you know the day you got saved? You know how you got saved? You know what the grace of God, you remember? What the grace of God did in your life. When you got saved, remember? Recollect? Thank God for that. If you can't remember, get serious before the Lord. Repent of whatever is causing the doubt. Am I saved? Am I not saved? Remember, recall, recollect. 
bring yourself to God unreservedly. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This can be the day. Delivered from sin. This can be the day. When we're saved, our mind, our heart, our intention, our attention, everything is on the Lord. We live for the Lord. We don't live for people. Whether they are there or not, our commitment is unto the Lord. However lowly we are in this world, we don't allow the loneliness to make us sin or do anything contrary to the grace of God abiding in us. We know that he gives us grace, the riches of his grace, he grants unto us. Anywhere we are, we know we're the children of God. We have the Holy Spirit guiding, leading, witnessing within us. We know that we are heirs together with him. Is together with Christ because we are now children of God and we know whatever we need we don't have to get into temptation to get anything we ask we seek we knock at the door and he always opens to us and we know we have a place in heaven. We are lifted to sit in heavenly places where Christ he has exalted us. And we are truly consecrated, committed believers. And it preserves us profitably in the kingdom of God. Temptations come and we do not yield like in the old days of sinfulness. By grace, we have reversed all those cravings of the world. You know, we're falling and rising, falling and rising. A person like that will be lost forever. Christ comes anytime. Happens to be the time he has fallen again. No steadfastness. No consistency. That will show the abiding grace of God in his life. Now you can resist the devil. Christ, the overcomer, lives on the inside of you. 
and ye have overcome them, little children. For greater is he that is in you than he, the tempter, that is in the world. Don't allow concentration on the things of this world to make you a fool in eternity. Crying had I known. Weeping had I known. Don't allow the pool of the world, the pool of riches, the pool of the flesh to drag you down, down until you drown in destruction and perdition. Come away, come out, stand firm. Be totally given permanently unto the Lord. Renew your consecration. The consecration of the good old days. Renew the consecration. And you will receive the crown of life. Don't take your eyes away from the crown, your mind away from the crown. Here, something good is waiting for you every day as you stay with the Lord, steadfast in the Lord. And there on the other side, the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of glory waiting for you. You will not miss your crown in Jesus' name. You will not miss your place in heaven in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Father, thank you for your children. Thank you for our brothers and sisters. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for their desire to keep on serving you until the very end. Help their decision. Help their desire. Help their devotion. And grant them grace that will match every challenge of their lives in Jesus' name. Make them stand. Make them steadfast. They will not look back. They will not fall. And when temptations come from any direction, in any way, the grace and the strength and the power to stand and to overcome, give everyone in Jesus' name. No one who has heard your words today will be lost eventually. Life in every life. Light in every life. The love of God in every heart. And Lord, every day, whatever comes each day, will live victoriously, steadfastly, righteously, godly, graciously, in Jesus' name. And if there are needs in any life, that the devil is trying to capitalize on. I'll give you this, I'll give you this. Lord, I pray this very day, solve the problems of your people in Jesus' name. And always give everyone, my brother there, my sister there, always give everyone what they ask of you to make them live satisfactorily in Jesus' name.
The strength of God abide in your life. The goodness of God abide in your life. And the joy of salvation never leave you in Jesus' name. You will continue until the end. And at last, God will bring you to that place. You'll have the crown of life. The crown of righteousness and the crown of glory. Your expectation here, your expectation hereafter will not be cut short. Fulfill your good desires on all your children, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.